As we've already seen, when it comes to creating a new task, by default, Microsoft is going to give the task the duration of one day. Why the question mark? Well, it's an indicator to you to let you know that you didn't enter in the duration, but Microsoft did, so you're not confused. I mean, the moment you come in and you decide to change the day, it'll actually get rid of the question mark. Now keep in mind, you're going to be dealing with tasks that require maybe just minutes, hours, weeks, or months, not just days. And then also keep in mind that a day is considered 8 hours, a work week 40 hours, and a month 20 working days. So even if you have holidays, vacation, it'll keep pushing the month out until it actually hits the 20 days that you'll actually be working. Now when it comes to entering in your hours, minutes, days, or weeks, just go ahead and click in a cell next to a task that you want to change its duration. For your minutes, go ahead and type in any number and then the letter M after it and hit enter and you can see it updates to one minute. And then you can look over in the Gantt chart and you can see you got a smaller bar there because it's not covering the day, it's just covering a minute. Now the difference between entering in minutes and months, with minutes it's the letter M, with months it's M-O. So what's your M-O? Go ahead and type in two, M-O, hit enter and there's months. For hours, just type in the number and then the letter H. For weeks, type in the number and then the letter W. Hit enter for your week. So let's get started and start entering in all our duration days for all our tasks here, except the project summary task. And the reason why is because the project summary task will summarize all the tasks that need to be completed down below. For example, what's the longest task that needs to be completed in order for the project to be completed? Well, it's the exam and software. It's going to take one week or five days. And that's what it's showing up above. It says five days it's going to take to complete the project because every other task starts on the first day and will be completed in one day, where this task right here is going to take an additional four days. And you can see up in the Gantt chart it's got its starter marker here for the project summary saying basically every task that you see lined up here starts on the same day. But there's only one task where the ending marker is at that ends on August the 7th. And you can see it right there, August the 7th. Speaking of which, when you look at these start and finish dates, I strongly recommend that you don't mess with them, leave them alone. When it comes to entering in your duration, do it in the duration field. I've had some issues when it comes to making changes to these, but if it works for you, go ahead and use them. Okay, let's start with our start manual here. Now, starting a manual doesn't take a day or two days or minutes unless you've got this big send-off party. I'm going to introduce you to what's called a milestone. By typing in the number zero next to any task, turns it into a milestone and you can see it representative over here in the Gantt chart by a black diamond and the date next to it. Milestones are like major points in your life or in this case the project. A major point in the project is actually starting the project. By the same token, another major milestone or point in the project is completing it so I can type in zero for the manual complete. So now I have two. Now you can have milestones throughout the project here. You can have them in between these tasks here, another black diamond, that when you hit that you can say, okay, here's a milestone, this is big, let's go ahead and celebrate, or let's get ready for the second phase. However you want them to mean something to you in the project, as a major point to consider when you hit that milestone within your project. And the first one is when we start it. Next let's go to the research phase. I'm going to go ahead and type in the days here. and. Examine the software, maybe four days, search the internet too, and so on. And if you notice real quick that when I type in the numbers, by default it puts in days. But because I made the change here to weeks, when I type in a number it's going to keep it as weeks. So if I don't want it as weeks, I need to come back in here and then type in for D as in days and hit enter and there we go. And then I can go ahead and continue. Well, I'm done with that. Let me hit enter and go down to interview subject matter experts and do two days four for the outline. Development phase could be 30 days to write the content. Editing five days, reviewing four, printing maybe two, and then I'm done. Now you may be asking me this question, how come we don't touch the project summary task which keeps track of all the tasks down below and yet we're actually setting up the summary task like the research phase, the outline phase, with their own days here. Well, think of it like this. Basically, I'm still in the brainstorming stage. Sure, I've got my summary task here and the three detailed tasks below it, but I haven't converted it and shown Microsoft that this is actually a summary task, which I'll show you how to do it in our outline training video. For right now, I don't want to outline it just yet because I may have more subtasks for my research phase summary task. Even so, even if I go ahead and convert this and show Microsoft that this is a summary task, I can still make changes. So just know the flexibility of that for right now. I'm going to go ahead and assign the numbers to my phases and then when I do later on add additional subtasks 
the moment that I convert this into a summary task or Microsoft recognizes it as such, it'll actually wipe out the numbers here and do what the project summary task is doing up above. In other words, it will wipe the number for the research phase and just keep track as a summary task for all the detail subtasks listed below. What's the longest uh, task here? Four days. So by default, when I do convert this, it'll say four days is the summary for all these three subtasks down below. So for right now, to keep it simple, I've added some of my summary task, a few detailed subtasks, and I'm typing in all the days. And then when I get a clear vision or I get more feedback from uh, other managers and resources, then I'll go ahead and update this. And then when I'm ready to go, I'll move on to the next step and go ahead and start creating outlines here. But for right now, to keep it simple, again, we've got the summary task. You know what it looks like. It keeps track of all the subtasks. Over in the Gantt chart, you can see that the summary task is also keeping track of the uh, longest task. In fact, if you can scroll over quite a ways here, you can see there's the ending point. To complete the project, we've got to complete this longest task here. Instead of scrolling back and forth, the shortcut to be able to view it in a condensed screen here is by crunching the timeline. To crunch the timeline so you're not viewing it every day here, just go ahead and right click on the timeline and go to zoom. Or you can come up in the view menu and go down to zoom and say that you want to see the entire project here and click OK and it crunches the timeline so it's not every day of the week. Now you've got like skipping from Monday to Wednesday to Friday so it can fit everything here so we can see how it's going to look overall. Then of course you can right click here, go back to zoom and say you want to view it in one month, click OK and stretch it out a bit. Go ahead and play with it and find out which view works best for you. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.